Hello and welcome to my channel. This is going to be another landscape in colored pencil, but this time I'm going to be drawing a sunset. It's going to be another smaller drawing, and again I'm going to be working on a 1000 grit waterproof sandpaper. The first thing I'm going to do is sketch out the shape of this river bank. Uh, because that's all I need for now because after that I'm going to start working on the background now as for the uh, the sun that needs to be round but I'm going to do it in freehand and I'm just going to hope I'm going to hope for the best I'm going to hope that it turns out round and I'm using an ivory colored pencil for that. That's what I'm going to use for the most part, for this brightest part of my scene. Anyway, as for the sky, I'm going to work with some orangey and pinkish tones. I started with a little bit of orange. And uh, the pencils I'm using are Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. I'm also going to use the Kohinoor silky black pencils a bit, but mostly Faber-Castell Polychromos. Now, uh, again, this surface is uh, 1000 grit sandpaper, so on this surface, the colored pencils will behave quite a bit differently than they do on regular paper. Now I'm adding a little bit of salmon because I want to make it a little bit more pinkish and a little bit lighter. So the pencils behave differently because the rough textured surface will grind on the pencils and uh, it'll create a little bit more of the residue that you can move around maybe. And also it will make it easier for you to blend and layer, especially to layer, not so much to blend. Now, for blending, I'm going to use tortillions, regular homemade tortillions, and uh, brushes. But the thing is that because this surface is so rough and grips so much of the material, it can be a little bit difficult to move that material around. So, um, when, you tr uh, when you try blending and you see that it's not really working very well or that too much of the background color of the paper, and which in my case is gray, is coming through. Then just put down more material, put down more layers, and when you have more material it'll be a little bit easier to blend, it'll be easier to subdue that darker grayish dull background. So you can see that I'm gradually layering a couple of different colors here to, to come up with the color that I want. I started with a little bit more of an orange and then I started adding some more pinkish tones. So we'll see where we end up. Now around the sun we want to create a glowing effect. So I used a slightly brighter orange, like a ye yellowish orange. I don't know its exact name in the Faber-Castell range, but that's what I'm going to use around the sun. and then. I'm going to have some more reddish tones here at the bottom. So I'm going to use some cadmium orange and some cadmium red and scarlet red. So I want some uh, reddish tones and then uh, at the bottom and on the sides I'm going to use some slightly more pinkish and even violet tones. But for now I'm working on top of the orangey tones uh, with uh, mostly with that salmon, which is kind of like a pinkish color, and blending that as much as possible with a tutelian, but you have to be patient with this because it's not going to go fast. Here at the bottom, <coughs> I'm adding a touch of blue. I use a light ultramarine, and then blended that in for a nice transition. And then uh, I'm moving on to the other side and making sure that everything is blended thoroughly. Now as for the sun, that needs to be the brightest part of the scene, so I'm going to use this uh, ivory colored pencil which is like a yellowish off-white color, very light color, 
and I'm gonna add a touch of yellow around it maybe so that it looks a little bit warmer I'm gonna make sure that I have a nice clean edge and that I can achieve that glowing warm effect around it so whenever you feel like uh, the background color of the paper is breaking through because there's not enough pencil on top just you can just layer a little bit more because on this surface you can layer almost indefinitely well not, not really indefinitely but you can definitely layer a lot more than on regular paper and you can easily work from light to dark as well as from dark to light as you will see so I'm just adding a little bit more of those uh, reddish orangey tones at the bottom and then some more of these yellowish lighter orangey tones around the sun to create that uh, glowing effect <clears throat> and like I said everything needs to be blended thoroughly this would have been much much easier and quicker with pastel pencils but there are reasons why I prefer colored pencils they are just much better when you're working on details and uh, this just takes a little bit more patience but you can achieve similar effects finally because tortillons won't blend quite as smoothly I could just dab on it a little bit with a brush to make it a bit more even you shouldn't overdo it because a brush will dig out uh, the, those particles of color pigment and it will reveal too much of the background so you shouldn't overdo it here on the right side I'm gonna start with some violet tones I'm using a darker red violet and uh, don't worry it's not going to be uh, such a sudden transition I'm gonna mix it with some other colors here at the bottom I'm gonna add a little bit more of that bluish color and make a nice transition between the two so we're just playing around with colors uh, we're gonna have some interesting colors here uh, at the bottom in the lower part of the scene as well as the top part of the scene and here as you can see now I'm blending this cadmium uh, orange or cadmium red uh, with that uh, violet and uh, making sure that I can make the more, more of a gradient more of a gradual transition and uh, what that will do this darker violet color it will actually enhance the appearance of the sunset because it will help us uh, to achieve that glowing effect because the sun uh, the sky around the sun will be a little bit warmer lighter a bit more reddish or yellowish there's uh, another river bank here in the background and uh, it's a little bit further than the one here on the left now I started with a dark indigo but I realized that that wasn't quite the color that I was looking for so I used a bit more of that red violet and then I blended those two in so this uh, distant river bank is also covered with trees so I'm gonna draw these tiny vertical lines to imitate those distant treetops sometimes it's just these tiny suggestions that make an impression on the viewer they're barely noticeable but they're very important I'm working mostly with this uh, dark bluish indigo color but I'm gonna modify it a little bit because I want it a little bit darker here on the right and at the bottom so I added a touch of black and now I'm gonna work on top of that with this red violet to stay a little bit more consistent with those uh, with those violet tones or purplish tones if you will uh, and of course I need to blend that nicely here uh, on this part of the water here to make sure that we have similar colors in the reflected area I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, light, uh, lighter red violet the colors don't have to be exactly the same because the colors in the surface of the water will be a little bit different but I'm gonna make it make them at least similar I'm adding a touch of blue as well now on the left side I'm gonna start drawing some trees and that's going to be 
the uh, foreground element that's going to create contrast with the background. So often in my landscapes I like to put these darker elements in front of the lighter backgrounds to create contrast and tension and a large tall tree is a perfect element to achieve that effect. So we're going to draw not one but a bunch of tall coniferous trees here on the left and they will stand out nicely against the much lighter background of the sky. So this is another part of the drawing process that requires a little bit more patience and focus as I'm trying to imitate both the overall shape of the tree and uh, the shape and the texture of those clusters of needles. You can see that I'm trying to make it look like some of these branches uh, are curving upwards and some of them are kind of drooping down, the longer ones at the bottom. Um, but I would say that this part of the drawing process is obviously a bit more fun than just uh, blending and layering which can get a little bit tedious with colored pencils because they're a little bit slower than pastels obviously for covering those large areas. And now I'm going to put another tall tree here. As Bob Ross would say everybody needs a friend. <laughs> But this tree is going to have a bunch of friends. I'm going to draw another tall tree trunk here in the back. This one is a little bit shorter, not necessarily because it's smaller, but because it's a little bit further away. I'm drawing some suggestions of branches, like these horizontal shapes. First I drew the vertical shape to have that, uh, to, to have that tree trunk, and then I'm starting to work on top of it and around it, drawing those, uh, the rest of the foliage and the rest of the canopy. Uh, another thing that I forgot to tell you is that here I'm actually using the Kohinoor Silky Black Pencil instead of the Faber-Castell uh, regular black pencil because uh, this one is a little bit darker. So when I'm layering on top of lighter colors and I still want it to look pitch black, I'm going to use this one. But you can use the Faber-Castell one as well. Uh, you can see that uh, some of the branches here are in front of the sun, so I made those lighter, like the light is really breaking through them and modifying their color, obviously. And I, I, I'm going to have an, a few more shorter trees here at the bottom. These are maybe a little bit further away on the other side of the river bank, or maybe they're just some smaller trees, I don't know doesn't really matter but now we have that uh, foreground element which is creating contrast and of course I'm gonna make the riverbank here darker as well I'm just gonna cover that with a black colored pencil to make sure that it's really dark and then maybe I'll add some lighter details to it I forgot to mention that the reference photo will be in the description uh, my scene is obviously going to be a little bit different, but some of the some of the elements of the composition are fairly similar, I suppose. Anyway, now I'm adding some touches of some different colors to this riverbank to make it a bit more interesting, and to make sure that it's catching some of those uh, colors of the environment. I'm just using this lighter bluish color to make sure that some of these rocks stand out to, to create some suggestions of uneven rocky terrain there and just adding a little bit more black colored pencil to further define some of those shapes as well as the overall shape of that riverbank. Now here at the bottom I'm going to use a little bit more of this darker red violet for the surface of the water. The surface of the water is going to be reflecting some of the colors of the sky, 
but it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit darker. It doesn't have to be the same. Now, I used this lighter bluish color uh, to show the line of the water around the riverbank. And now I'm going to start drawing the reflections. So, the reflected uh, shapes of trees here are going to make the surface of the water darker on the left and then in the middle we're going to have more of those orangey tones and then on the right more of the violet tones so now I'm putting in the orangey tones I've done a number of videos on drawing reflections both in black and white with charcoal and in colored pencil on various surfaces and the trick I think is to make sure that the values match the values in the image above the water and the reflected image in the water they roughly match you don't have to get the shapes to look exactly the same because the shapes are going to be distorted by the movement of the water anyway there's going to be some ripples um, which are going to be creating wiggly distorted looking images so don't worry about the exact shape what you need to worry about is the positioning so like for example this uh, sun needs to be reflected here and i need to make sure that uh, the reflection is directly below the sun so i can't move it too much to the left or too much to the right if you uh, don't make it perfect if it's a little bit off nobody's going to notice because like I said there is still the ripples and the movement of the water but it has to be roughly in the same place in the same position I started with a lighter yellowish color and then I put some other tones like lighter, lighter orangey tones and you can see that I'm drawing these interrupted shapes and now I'm putting in the lightest color that I used so far the ivory colored pencil to make some parts of that reflection even brighter and uh, like I said the fact that I'm drawing these interrupted shapes interrupted lines is uh, very important because that's the way the reflections will look because of the movement and the gentle rip, uh, ripples in the water the same thing is going to be happening with these trees you can see again that I'm drawing these interrupted shapes it's a good idea to almost uh, wiggle your hand a little bit like so uh, to create the, the, these uh, distorted distorted looking shapes because that's what's going to make it look more convincing and it's going to make it look more like an actual reflection but the key as I've already mentioned is trying to match uh, the values and the colors uh, in, in the reflected image with the uh, with the objects above the line of the water so right now I'm just sort of refining the appearance of that reflection adding maybe some orangey tones to interrupt some of these darker shapes um, refining the appearance of the reflection as well as the colors in it but it doesn't have to be perfect and usually you can just get away with a few suggestions I even did a little bit of softening with a brush but I don't want to break up or ruin these nice clean ripples that I created I'm going to have a few more of these touches uh, with a darker with a black pencil and then uh, I'm going to have uh, some ripples here in the on the right side where we're going to have uh, some orange a mixture of orangey and those violet tones a few touches of that uh, lighter ultramarine and uh, maybe a little bit of this pink salmon color and that should probably do it it should look convincing enough so the drawing is now finished I'm going to put my signature in the lower right corner and I hope that you like this little scene I created don't forget to check out my other videos give me a like subscribe 
comment, let me know what you think. For longer videos, more content, full uh, length narrated footage, check out my Patreon. Bye for now.